Hello dear, uh, welcome to my class of material testing. Uh, I hope you guys are safe and fine right now. Uh, in the situation of COVID-2019, you guys may already know the policy of our university that we are going to use the online teaching for a while back after the Songkran festival we may have chance to meet face to face again I hope so uh, so by adjusting ourselves I hope uh, my teaching at least may help you to study this class okay uh, let talking about the textbook I hope you guys already joined Facebook and the Google class I upload all the important teaching material up there uh, the one is the lecture note uh, is this in Thai I'm sorry about that I don't have chance to translate to English yet and uh, actually my powerpoint will cover that so if you cannot read Thai you just read the material from the powerpoint that's I already provide you guys on that for the library manual I have both in Thai and English I think you may enjoy it and the picture of this course uh, we the School of Civil Engineering hope after you success this class you will first familiar and understand the mechanical properties of the engineering materials if you think back to the mechanics of material the mechanical property that we are study for the structural steel we are talking about the yielding stress we are talking about the modulus of elasticity we also talking about the ultimate stress and we also talking about the percent elongation of the material these four mechanical properties are important for structural steel because the Thailand industrial standard or even even the uh, the the American standard or Japanese standard, they use these four factor to control the production of the structural steel. So it's important for you guys to familiar and understand them. Second, we are an engineer. One of the skill that we should have is testing the required material what are the required material mostly we use the structural steel as i mentioned before another one is the concrete these two materials are so different the concrete is the brittle material that means it can fail abruptly However, the structural steel is a ductile material. It can deform a lot before its failure. So, the concrete is tested in compression because most of the concrete is used for compression. And concrete is no good for tension. But in the opposite direction, the steel are very good in tension and compression however due to the application most of the steel was used land forces to the concrete to taking care of the tension in, in the land forces concrete structure so the steel are usually test by tension okay that is different the concrete is in compression the steel is in tension and then after you get the result the stress then curve 
of the concrete and the distant curve of the steel, you supposed to appreciate what we have. I mean, you got to uh, you got to read the distant curve for the structure of steel and can take the yielding stress, the ultimate stress, out of the graph. And at the meantime, you can calculate for the modulus of elasticity. And then you understand the modulus of elasticity is the stiffness of the steel and the yielding stress is the strength of the steel. They are important in the design of the structural steel. And last one, the third, you're supposed to acquire with the standard and specification of material testing. When you design the structure, you also need to specify the material properties such as the yielding stress of the steel, the ultimate compressive stress of the concrete, and then you divide them with the factor of safety, you get the allowable stress. Based on allowable stress, you got to specify them into the specification of the material. And then you use that specification to test the, the material. And then uh, you will be safe if the result of testing is larger than what you are specify in the in the design. So that means you got to go back and list the standard and the specification of the material that you use in your design in your construction of the building. Next, what this course going to contain? There are only six chapters of this. And the first one is just an introduction. We will be talking about how you write the setting result properly. This means each lab, we could have a total 30 lab. You got to write the, the lab report. And then what the content in the lab report, I will be talking about that later. The second, when you get the data from the test, there are a number of data. So you got to find the mean, you got to find the standard deviation. Do you remember that from the high school? We are going to talk about it later. The third, the test can be the tension test, can be the compression test, can be the fractional test, can be the shear test. Each test are different. So you got to understand the testing procedure of tension test, the testing procedure of compression test, the testing procedure of shear test, or another testing procedure of fractional test. And when you understand that, you do the test, you got the mechanical property of the edging material. This chapter is the same chapter, really close to the third chapter in the mechanics of material. So you guys know already about this. And then we talked again about the collecting of the test. For example, the concrete is good to resist the compression force. And the concrete is not quite good to take the tension test, no sorry, taking the tension force. So the characteristics of the test is concrete is mostly is a compression test. However, in some cases, we got to find the tension strength of the concrete. We do the split tensile test. That means you got to understand the different, the characteristics of each test. And the last one, we're talking about the general property of the aging material. So you will know the advantage and this advantage of each material, such as for the steel, the advantage is high strength to weight ratio. It has really high strength and it has high stiffness compared to 
the concrete and then form the knowledge of each material property so you can select the material in your structure properly this course can be separated into two parts one is direction and another one is the lab so we divide 100% into half half that means if you finish studying with my lecture we're going to have examination that is 50% and I think we're supposed to have two examinations one in the midterm and another one in the final and separate the score to 25% and 25% in this case you will have a chance to taking two examinations if you miss one you still have another one to collect yourself and grading guide above 85 is going to be A and below 54 is going to be F Normally, the 54, the F, uh, are based on the instructor description. Most of the time, it can be get low at 50. It's up to your class. The attendance policy, this term is changed. They are changed, they are changed because of our lecture online. So a lot of things not apply here. But for the examination, you guys, number four, number three, still need to follow the SUG decoration. Okay, and uh, basis on that, let's see after the Songkhan festival, if we have face to face class, the student policy may be applied. This is the engine paper. Everybody will use this to write down your lab report. And the lab, there are a total of 30 lab. And the first two lab will join together. That means the inspection of the methane testing lab and the boson lecture lab. That's it could be our first set of lab. And then we have the third, you may lead it by yourself, the fourth. And the fifth, the third is tension test, the fourth is torsion test, the fifth is compression test. Okay, let me take a break over here. I got a call. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Uh, come back to the laboratory that we use. The first and second lab going to be the first sets of our lab. And the third is tension heads of the steel and cast ion. The steel is ductile material. The cast ion is brittle battery. And we will see how they perform in tension. The fourth, we're talking about torsion heads with the steel and cast ion. The fifth, we're talking the compression heads of wood. One is in parallel to the grain. Another one is in perpendicular to the grain. We testing this because the wood have different property parallel to the grain and perpendicular to the grain. And number six, we are talking about the compression and fracture of the brick, brick used to build the wall. And the seven uh, is going to talk about the compression test of the concrete. Okay, and I use the different sets of the color to separate the set of the testing instrument we're going to use. That means one, two go together, the three are independent, the four are independent, the five, six, seven, we are going to use the same machine in the F5 building. Sorry, F4 building. Uh, number eight, we're talking about the fractional test of wood, and number nine is the fractional test of steel and cast iron. They all are different material; the, their property are different. And then number ten, we're talking about the leg shear, and eleven, we're talking about shear test of wood parallel to gain. And the 
the well, we talk in the buckling of the steel column. This lab, the two well, related to the last chapter of the mechanics of material, if you may remember. And the last one, we talk in the fatigue test of the aluminum. See, if we separate the, all of the 13 tests, we can see we're going to test the pattern in what? In fracture, in shear test. This one is in compression. And if we go back, this one in tension, this one in shear, this one in compression. So mostly we're talking about the test of the battery in tension, in shear, number four, in compression, five, six, seven, in fracture, eight and nine, and also 10, 11 is talking about shear, 12 in compression. And fatigue actually is different kind of test. Uh, you may study that later. Okay, coming to the lab schedule. Uh, the international class, we don't have much group. I will group you guys and give you the detail later. Uh, anyway, since you guys are in the total of about, I think, 10, so you can separate into two groups. That means it can be the group 1 and also the group 2. If you are in group 1, you will follow this yellow band. And if you guys in group 2, you will follow the number of lab in the green band. Okay. And the code of conduct, you got to dress the SUT laboratory suit, you know whether right. And also, you got to wear the safety device if required. And you got to attend the lab on time, no more than 10 minutes late. You got to behave in accordance with the laboratory decoration. And then, when you come to the lab, the TA will brief you some important point, and the TA also will provide you a pre-quiz. This one going to be one point out of ten point of your lab session. Okay, that means after the quiz, that is one percent, and your lab report is going to be ninety percent. That's one and nine point. And then you got to follow the instruction carefully because some lab are very dangerous to follow. After finish the lab, you got to clean the lab, you create the instrument and return the instrument to the supervisor. And each lab you going to turn in to us. I mean me and the TA before the beginning of the lab session. That's mean within 10 minutes of the item two. And some of important PowerPoint I like you to see about the beautiful building of Burj Khalifa. That is now the tallest building in the world. And the Burj Khalifa and the Taipei 101 and the Pitonas, the third three of them are in Asia. So now the construction industry in the Asia is really prosperous compared to the Western world. So you guys is a new future of us, right? Okay, that is for the introduction of this course. I choose finish is here. And then we will talk you chapter one, the presentation of testing this out later. Okay, uh, bye for now.